today we're going to create a panoramic background from this shot, which is from a camera held sideways, and then just swept. This is just a uh, handheld shot. So we're going to start out using a tripod solve. So we're just going to let it run through and take a quick uh, crack at that, and we'll clean that up quick as a start. I'm going to use the cleanup trackers. Just take out a bunch of the uh, worst things for starters. Resolve. You see, we're getting down pixel error around 0.61. And I'll take out any of the individual bad frames also. So right now we're down about. 0.56, and we have a uh, initial solve for this shot as a tripod mode shot. Okay, let's take a look at this now in 3D. So here we have the camera, and you see it tilts upwards to the uh, the camera being turned on its side. So what we want to do is put together some geometry to hold the background image that we're going to use. And we have a couple of different choices there. We could use a plane, we can use a cylinder, we could use a sphere. They correspond to different kinds of ways to unwrap a globe, say. So in, in this particular example, with this kind of motion, you know, using a cylinder is a pretty good choice. So we're going to start out doing that. And we have a little, little work to be done here. So let's go and create a cylinder right where the camera is. And we'll kind of match it up a bit to the uh, points there. And what we want to do is match up that cylinder to the field of view of the camera so that kind of we want to have the geometry covered as much as possible by the camera view but not overlapping or not going outside of that boundary. So over here in the camera view you can see there's a wireframe view of the mesh and you can see you know, I've zoomed that view out a little bit and you can see kind of where the edge of that geometry is falling and we'll just scrub through the shot and it looks like I've done reasonably well getting that to line up maybe it needs to be just a little bit taller for this end of the shot so I'll just adjust that it's okay to have a little black space here but let's We'll try not to have any part of the image fall off. The other thing that we need to do at this point before we start doing any further editing is we can go and increase the resolution of this geometry which will make our texture extraction process better. It's especially important if you have uh, a lens distortion involved. So here we go with a, a rough setup of some geometry now we're going to go and cut that geometry down to mit match the field of view a bit better. We're going to do the cutting down in the perspective window. We need to adjust this a little bit. Uh, this kind of field of view and scaling we've got. We wind up fairly far away, so we need to adjust our clipping settings a little bit. 
So here's uh, the scene that we've got. We've got the camera right in the middle. And the first thing that we'll do, actually we'll turn off the shadows. And we want to set this up to be the edit mesh. And we want to start lassoing. Let's just go to uh, rectangular mode here. Start lassoing these faces. And delete the selected faces. And one thing we can do here, let's just uh, bring up the mesh menu. We'll put that there. So now let's spin around to the other side and, and basically the, uh, the cylinder was built with uh, end caps by the synth eyes. It's normal. The cylinder has end caps. So we've just taken those out. One thing I'll point out, we need to be deleting from the outside of the object. So that's how Synthize tells which parts you want to delete exactly. And so you're not deleting all the way through the middle of the object and getting both sides of it. So that might have been a little too far. As you can see, there's just a bit of playing around here to uh, adjust things the right way. Again, the point of this is just to avoid having too much unused space in the texture map. So that should be pretty good, I think. So what we can do now is just delete all the unused vertices. Just turning solid meshes back on. You can actually look in, you know, I'm looking at the little frustrum lines in this viewport to see where, where they're going and make sure that they're staying inside the portion of the mesh that we've left. So I think basically we've got the uh, mesh set up reasonably now. And... Now we can start to think about the texturing.